All right, everybody, this is my chloroplast structure tutorial. And for this tutorial, I've prepared this image for you here, which you can grab from either my website. And my website is up here at www.zerobio.com. Come on by and check out all the other stuff I've got for grade 12 biology, grade 11, grade 10, whatever it is. You can find this um, printout here, but I'll also put it in the information section uh, below this video in case you just want to click download and you don't want to go to zero bio. That'd be sad. Come on over. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah. So what we've got here is a legend or key, and I'm going to be coloring in these things so that we can then apply the color to the chloroplast and all of its structures and the sun and stuff. And we're going to talk a little bit about what they do, but this is not going to get deeply into the process of photosynthesis. It's more just looking at chloroplast structure, obviously. All right. So um, hopefully you've got the diagram or pause the video, go get the, go get the diagram, go get your colored pencils, grab a coffee or something like that, and let's get to it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to color in this box. I've colored it in sort of an orangey yellow, and that's highlighted and colored in my sun and this photon or ray of light here. So choose a color. Again, your colors don't have to match my colors, um, whatever you think works, but I thought a sort of an orangey yellow would be great for sunlight. So obviously photosynthesis requires light because it's synthesis with photo or photons or light. All right, so here I've got the sun giving off rays and I've got one photon coming down, hitting the chloroplast and actually going through the chloroplast and hitting the structure down here. So light would hit the leaf, would have to go into the leaf cells and then right down into the chloroplast itself. So we'll talk a little bit about, about the function of light uh, in a bit. Let's look at the chloroplast itself. I've chosen an olive green color to show sort of the outline on, uh, on the outside of the of the chloroplast and then I've cut it imagine it's like a disc like thing and I've cut it so we can look into the chloroplast here we're looking into all the cool stuff inside there and when you do that you can see that the chloroplast is made of two membranes all right so it's a membrane here and a membrane surround it so there's an outer membrane and an inner membrane and this is what I'm trying to illustrate here so let's color this in I'm coloring it in a light green. I'm gonna to try to use a lot of shades of green. You may not have all those colors, so you could color it hot pink, whatever you, whatever you like. It'd be a very cool, you know, chloroplast. Um, okay, so let's come over here. And what I want to um, illustrate here is that this region is circling two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And membranes are made of phospholipids. So this would represent the phospholipids of the outer membrane, and that would represent the phospholipids of the inner membrane. So there are two lipid bilayers, a total of four rows of phospholipids, if you will. So that's the outer and the inner membrane. And by the way, note the similarity with mitochondria, right? Which uh, create a lot of ATP, right? Aerobic cellular aspiration. They also have an outer and an inner membrane. And then so does the chloroplast. So we're working our way into the mitochondrion. Now, um, inside the mitochondrion, let's use an arrow here. In this region, that's white right now, but we're going to color that in in a moment. This region is called the stroma, and it's analogous, I guess, to the matrix of the mitochondrion. Right on the inside of the mitochondrion, uh, you've got this fluid-filled matrix, and then just right outside that, you got the inner membrane and the inter intermembrane space and the outer membrane. Um, so the stroma is right on the inside, and this is going to be the site for something called the dark reactions. This is really the second half of photosynthesis. So I'm trying to in indicate here that the dark reactions occur in here, whereas the light reactions, which we'll talk about in a moment, occur in these structures right over here. So we're going to color in the stroma, which is where the dark reactions occur. So let's do that. So I've got the stroma here in a sort of a medium gray color because I thought it looked cool against the white and the shadow and, and these arrows and stuff like that. So you choose whatever color works for you. But that's the stroma, the liquid interior of the chloroplast. Now, 
what are these tower-like structures here made of disks? I'm going to color those in right now, and I realize you may still be coloring the stroma, so feel free to pause the video and whenever you need to, and then pick it up after that. I'm coloring in something called the grana. Now, grana are stacks of coin-like structures or disks. So this is one granum, U-M, that's singular. It's another granum, another granum with a weird looking thing there, and another granum. Collectively, these are called grana, and one is a granum. This is where, as I said, the light reactions will occur. So imagine these are like some kind of weird sci-fi you know, apartment building or tower or something like that. Uh, this is where uh, the light is really going to be used in photosynthesis. And that's why I've got the lightning bolt here coming in and hitting one of these. All right, so uh, these are called grana and they are stacks of disc-like structures. And each of these discs, like that one there, and then there's another one here and another one. Don't worry, I won't point to every single one. All right. Each one of these is called a thylakoid. So we're going to use that word next. So I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to highlight at least one thylakoid, actually one in the blow up. So I've colored this in a slightly lighter green color just so that you could see the difference. All right, they'd all be the same, and every one of these does the light reactions or light dependent reactions of photosynthesis, but I'm just highlighting one of them so you can see. Now, it is a disc-like structure and it has a membrane around it. And if you were to cut it, you could look inside. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate over here. We're looking inside of a thylakoid at something called the thylakoid space. So it's a bit of a blow up there. And it's also present right over there. Thylakoid space is kind of like stroma or matrix. It's another fluid-filled environment. It's going to be important for the light reactions of photosynthesis. All right, so let's highlight the thylakoid space. And again, I've just colored this in sort of a gray color just to make it a little bit more visible here. So choose any color you want to do that. Now, embedded in the thylakoid membrane are molecules. And I'll circle some of them. See, look like little googly eyes there. All of these molecules make up something called photosystems. So there is a photosystem here, and another photosystem, and another photosystem, and there, and there. These are called photosystems. And there's a couple of different types of photosystems. And these include a bunch of different molecules, such as chlorophylls, carotenoids, other things that are called the photosynthetic pigments. These are the molecules that actually absorb the sunlight. So when you see this bolt of, of, of light coming down, hitting the thylakoid, it's going to come down and hit the photosystems, those pigments, that's going to absorb the light and then stuff is going to happen. In addition to, to that stuff, there's also electron transport chains in the thylakoid membranes. So I'm sort of grouping all of that stuff together and saying, these are the photosystems where the light reactions occur, okay? So, you know, if you go in to more depth with your teacher uh, about that, you'll understand better. But for now, those are just called photosystems. They're embedded in the thylakoid membrane. There's all the various photosynthetic pigments and a bunch of other stuff going on there. So this is what does the light reactions. And as a result of the light reactions, ATP and NADPH are produced. ATP, a high energy compound, NADPH, which is, which is an electron carrier. And these are the two major products of the light reactions that are, are occurring in the thylakoid uh, the, through the photosystems embedded in the membrane and dealing with that thylakoid space. All that stuff is important. The net result, though, is pr production of the ATP and NADPH. That stuff is going to be used over here with the um, molecules that are needed for the dark reactions, which you'll study later anyhow. The dark reactions are going to require carbon dioxide and water. And I've tried to illustrate with these arrows that they're coming into the chloroplast. Um, carbohydrates, of course, are made of carbon and oxygen and hydrogen. And this is where those atoms are coming from. 
But you can't just take CO2 and water and put them in a bag and shake them up and all of a sudden you've got glucose, right? You need to put them together in a special arrangement. In order to do that, it takes ATP and NADPH, and you'll see how later. And so the products of the light reactions, the reason we need sunlight is to produce these and to use them in the dark reactions to make glucose. In addition to making ATP and NADPH, however, oxygen is released. And I've shown oxygen leaving the chloroplast because this is going to go out into the environment. This is the oxygen that, that we are going to breathe and need for our aerobic cellular respiration, right? So mitochondria are going to rely on chloroplasts to, pro to provide the oxygen so the mitochondria can do their thing. All right, so uh, there's a lot going on here um, in the light reactions and then in the dark reactions. Now, you're also going to see these connectors. So I've just colored in la the lamellae. One would be a lamella, many are lamellae. These are bridges or tunnels or something like that, interconnecting membranes that connect the granite together so that they can share resources. The ultimate goal of photosynthesis is to produce carbohydrates. The production of oxygen, as we saw, is a lucky thing for us, all right? It's a byproduct that is not used in photosynthesis and actually can be detrimental in some ways, as you'll see later with photorespiration. But the ultimate goal is to produce carbohydrates. And I'm illustrating carbohydrate down here. So the dark reactions use the ATP and NADPH along with CO2 and water and put that stuff together to produce carbohydrates. Now we could talk about glucose and glucose is polymerized, clicked together to produce something like starch. All right, so this would be a starch deposit or a starch granule. These are found in the stroma of the chloroplast. And it'd be more than one. I just didn't want to make this diagram too complicated. So plants can produce um, starch as a result of the, in, during the dark reactions. But it could also produce cellulose, which is another polysaccharide, right? Another polymer of glucose, just with a different arrangement. Cellulose is needed in cell walls. So once you can build the glucose, the brick, let's say, you can put it together in various ways. You can make starch, which will be a storage form for energy because plants also have mitochondria, all right? They have chloroplasts in their cells and mitochondria. They make their own food. You know this, right? They're called autotrophs. They make their own glucose and then they metabolize it using glycolysis, Krebs cycle, all that kind of stuff to make ATP. All right, it's not this ATP right here necessarily, it's ATP for all their other functions, their movement, their growth, their reproduction. So um, plants produce their own glucose and then they can either store it as starch for later use, they can make cellulose for cell walls, they can transport it often as sucrose in the sap within the vessels within the, the plant. And they can transport it from the leaves, you know, to the flowers and, and the stems and the roots. Every, everywhere you have active cells that are, that are going to need sugar as, a, as, a, as an energy source. All right. So this is the ultimate goal is to produce um, the carbohydrate. And I'm just focusing on starch. So there's a starch deposit sitting in the stroma after photosynthesis has been completed we've successfully made what we needed and we have successfully completed the tutorial as well so this was just an overview of chloroplast structure um, with a cool little diagram i hope you found that helpful see you soon